Okay, well, let's talk about some more stupid polynomial tricks. Now, in particular, um, okay, you can factor you know, two binomials using the FOIL method or whatever, but what about if you're given two you know, big mama things? Like, for example, like a binomial and a trinomial, or a trinomial and a geigelanomial. I mean, you know, how do you do that? Well, there's no nice little way of spelling out the method. I mean, maybe it's like, you know, and then you say, okay, do the first times the second and the third and the fifth and so on. Yeah. So instead of worrying about the whole FOIL thing, what we use is the distributive property. So let me actually show you an example of this. You know, actually, I sort of enjoy these things, which show you how deranged I am, because it's sort of fun. It's sort of bookkeeping. Now, of course, if you have something simple like this, uh, minus x plus 2, 1 plus x, you could just use the FOIL method. And if you do the FOIL method, I'll do it for you really fast. I'll just talk through the FOIL method. So this is going to be a talking FOIL. I see a minus x plus 2 minus x squared plus 2x. And you combine that and you get the answer. Or what you could do is you could use the distributive thing. And the distributive thing is to consider this whole thing. Take out a little bit of math dough. <laughs> Actually, of course, this is really math dough, but OK. All right, so if we take some of this stuff and think of this like a blop, then we can just distribute that whole thing times 1 and distribute that whole thing times x. If I distribute anything times 1, it's just itself. So in fact, this would just give me a, a minus x plus 2. That's what I get when I just take the whole blop and multiply it by 1. If I now take the whole blop and multiply it by the x, that actually will require me another distribution. Do you see where it would be? It would be this one. It would be x times all that. And so that would be a minus x squared plus 2x, distributing that across. So when you're foiling, you're just taking every term here and multiplying it by every term here, and so on. OK, now you take that method, you can now do much more exotic things. For example, let's multiply y plus 3 times the quantity y squared minus y plus 1. Looks frightening at first, but just remember, think about this thing as a blob and just distribute that through to each term. Let's see what happens. If I distribute the blob to here, I would have blob times y squared. Then minus blob, there's the blob, you see, times y. Then plus blob times 1. I'm going to suppress the desire of writing 1 in there. So I've got the blob here, the blob here, the blob here. Let me write the blob in. That's y plus 3, y plus 3, and y plus 3. Well, now I do distribu distributive property the other way, you see? I've got now this thing as sort of the, the thing, and I'm going to distribute this way. So I sort of go, yep, yep, and then so on. So this would give me a y to the fourth plus 3y squared. Oh, sorry, uh, y times y squared is not y to the fourth. Why did you say y to the fourth? Oh, that's right, it was me. Sorry, OK. You're OK. This would actually be a y cubed. You know, on the web sometimes when things sort of get a little messed up, and the ticks, actually, that was not my fault. OK, so y cubed plus 3y squared. Now, here, what do we have? Here we have a y squared, if I distribute, I'd see a y squared, and then I'd see a plus 3y. Now, don't forget we're subtracting, so I'm going to put a minus sign there, and then I've got that last stuff there. Now, does this look right to you? Let me help you. It's not right. In fact, I made one of my favorite mistakes of all time. That's right. You know what that mistake is? It's number four in my classic list. That's right. Number four, subtracting mistake. Classic mistake. Number four in my list out of ten. And that is forgetting to distribute the negative sign. Remember the moral. There it is. Spread the negativity. You have to multiply everything through by that negative sign. You even have to subtract that. OK, and now what do we have? We have y cubed plus 3y squared minus y squared. And I'm, I'm spreading that now, a little distributive, minus 3y plus y plus 3. Such a big problem, I'm running off the page. So let me just sort of stick on a little thing right here. And what do I see? I see y cubed. I'm now just combining like terms. What squares do we have here? We have a 3y squared. We have a minus y squared, so that's 2 y squared, and that's it. So then plus 2y squared. Any y's in the picture? Yep, we have a minus 3y, and then we have a plus y, so that's a minus 
2y, and then we have a plus 3. And that's the answer. So, OK, it's a little bit messy, I admit. But if you cover this up, cover that up, that's what multiplying all this out equals. Notice all I'm doing is using the distributive property. Now, you could do much more exotic examples. In fact, maybe I'll try one really, really, really big one. How about x minus y plus z? So that's a trinomial. I'm going to multiply it by another trinomial. 2x squared minus 4y plus z. So true, two trinomials together. One way of thinking about this is to say, you know what? Every term here has to be multiplied by every term here. Or you could think about it as the blob. This blob times that, this blob times that, this blob times that. But notice that if you're taking this blob times this, then later on in life, I'll have to take this times each of these things. So actually, if you don't like the blob or you don't have this kind of putty around to use this, you could just be really, really careful with the bookkeeping and make sure every term hits every other term. Let me show you this way. It's the same way, just a different way of thinking about it. And also, it takes up a lot less room. This x right here has to multiply every single term here. So let me just do that. x times this is going to be 2x cubed. x times this is minus 4xy. x times this is plus xz. There I've taken that x and pushed it all the way through to these terms. Now let me take the minus y. Notice there's a minus sign there. The minus y and hit it through every term here. So minus y times this would be minus 2x squared y. Then minus y times this would be a plus, because a minus times a minus is a positive, plus 4y squared. And then a minus y times z is going to be minus yz. So there's the next whole terms we have to all add together. Let me put a little plus sign here. And so now I've pushed the minus y all the way through, and I've got that z left. So z has to hit everybody. And so I'd see plus 2x squared z minus 4yz plus z squared. So all those terms added together is what this works out to be. By the way, one little closing thing here. How many terms are there? How many monomials are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And in fact, if you think about it a little bit, you can always make sure that your answer is right, at least when you have it out in this expanded way. Because since each of these, one of these three terms has to multiply each of these three terms, there should be a total of what? Well, let's see. There's three things here and three things here, and everyone has to hit each other, so there's actually nine possibilities. So in fact, if we only had eight or six terms, we know that we did something wrong. Now, of course, after you have the terms, you might be able to combine them. In that case, they might actually get less. So don't panic if the final answer after you simplify everything is less. But when you multiply it all out, you should check and say, OK, look, there's three things here, three things here. I put it all together. I should get nine. For example, with two uh, binomials, you the FOIL method, how many should you have? You should have four terms, right? Two and two. And that's what you have, FOIL. Spell it, four. OK, see you soon.